straight to it starting off with some benchmarking scores from Geekbench 4 and here you can see that the iPhone 8 Plus absolutely destroys pretty much every other device out there with some very very high scores highest we've ever seen and that is thanks to the Apple A11 Bionic chip and let's see how this translates into real world performance Kicking off with the fingerprint scanners, now they are in different positions and personally speaking I do prefer Touch ID on the front here, it is a little bit in an awkward position on the Notate but in this video we are specifically looking at speed and syncing these two up that was very very close so slowing this down to 20% looks like the animation did finish first on the Note 8 uh, but then when it fully brightens up the display it's about the same so very close here Moving on to the camera launch using the quickest method to launch both cameras and slowing this down I think it was pretty much neck and neck very very difficult to tell them apart Now let's move on to the apps you can see that we've got nothing open in the background on either device and we're going to start off with some very low intensive apps and then move up to some games so uh, initially it's just the calculator just to see if this stays open in the background so simple equation and we're going to leave that there now let's move on to the browser. We are using the native browsers on both devices just because they are the most optimized usually. And we will be going on to the BBC News website just because that doesn't have any adverts on there. And that does finish first on the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. There seems to be a bit of a hiccup on the iPhone 8 Plus here. Um, but let's continue and carry on. So we're going to go on to the first article. And it actually finishes first on the iPhone 8 Plus. So you can see that the video uh, kind of had that blink once it finished loading. Now moving on to Twitter. First on the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. And we'll just refresh the home screen here so we've got all of the latest tweets on. And now we're going to go over onto notifications. Finish first here on the iPhone 8 Plus. We're going to refresh the notifications just so we've got all the latest ones here. And we'll move on with the test. Now we're going to go on to YouTube. And we've got different content loading up. So although both of them are for my buddy Zach. Um, so let's go on to the trending tab and let's find a video which is unlikely to have any pre-roll ads. Uh, so I can see this trailer here. So let's go on to that. Start playing ever so slightly quicker on the Note 8. Now we're going to leave those on and we're going to go on to games. So kicking off with Angry Birds 2 and you can see this timer here. This will tell us exactly how long each of these uh, take to load up games. So with Angry Birds 2, the iPhone 8 Plus is the winner by just about a second. So very close indeed. Moving on to Mario Run. Once again, keeping an eye on that timer. And this time it finished first on the Note 8, ever so slightly quicker. Loading the game up, quicker on the iPhone 8 Plus. So, so far, very, very close between them two. Now we're gonna bump it up a notch and we're gonna carry on with some 3D games. So starting off with Sonic. Can't have Mario without Sonic. And that does finish very quickly on the iPhone 8 Plus. Comes in quite a few seconds later on the Note 8. We're going to play this game. We'll leave it open. Now we're going to move on to Subway Surfers. Now watching both of the load bars. Seems to be loading a little bit quicker on the Note 8. But it actually finishes first on the iPhone 8 Plus. Interesting results. But once again very very close here. Moving on to Temple Run 2. And that was a clear win for the iPhone 8 Plus. So for the games generally, it does seem like the iPhone 8 Plus so far uh, has been loading them quicker. We're going to play this and we're going to move on to Dead Trigger 2. Wow, that was very quick. So the load screen does pop up on the iPhone 8 Plus first. Uh, let's play the game. Once again, keeping a look on that timer. And we have it finished on the iPhone 8 Plus. Comes in quite a few seconds later on the Note 8. So a very clear one here for the iPhone 8 Plus once again. Now we'll leave this game open in the background. And we're going to move on to our next game which is Asphalt 8. Now 
Now, I was very close, but once again, quicker on the iPhone 8 Plus. Now we're going to move on to our last game, and this is Real Steel. Quicker once again on the iPhone 8 Plus, and it comes in a few seconds later on the Note 8. We'll play the game, and we'll see which one of these loads the full game up first. And it is the iPhone 8 Plus. A few seconds later, once again, on the Note 8. So for loading up games overall, I would say the iPhone 8 Plus has been the winner here so far. Now we're going to move on to RAM management. So seeing if all the apps are open in the background, Asphalt 8 is in the same place. Dead Trigger 2 is in the same place on both devices. Temple Run 2 in the same place for both devices. Subway Surfers. Yep. As we left it. Sonic Dash Yep, same plays So, so far so good for everything Mario Run Oh Oh, hold on That's uh, that's quite surprising It's having to reload on the iPhone 8 Plus This is something I wasn't expecting uh, Because previous versions of iOS have not done this They've been really good at RAM management Let's see if Angry Birds 2 is still open on both once again, it's not open on the iPhone 8 Plus on the Note 8. It is right where we left it. Now, we do have more RAM on the Note 8, 6 gigabytes versus 3 gigabytes on the iPhone 8 Plus, but uh, iPhones are usually pretty well optimized. Moving on to YouTube, and once again, YouTube has to get reloaded on the iPhone 8 Plus. I'm not sure if this is the latest iOS update, whether it still needs some time to be fully optimized with some apps. Twitter has to be reloaded once again as well on the iPhone 8 Plus. So for RAM management, the clear winner here is the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Going onto the browser, it uh, does have to refresh again on the iPhone 8 Plus. It's uh, right where we left it on the Note 8. Finally, the calculator, uh, that's fine on both. So some very, very interesting results here. Both were pretty much neck and neck from the fingerprint scanners, camera launch, as well as some of the lower intensive apps. When it came to most games, the iPhone 8 Plus was clearly faster. But when it came to RAM management, then surprisingly, the Note 8 did do better. Now it does have more RAM as mentioned, but uh, the iPhone is usually pretty optimized. I'm thinking this is maybe because we have the latest version of iOS. Uh, some of these apps still need to be optimized to take full advantage of that A11 Bionic chip, which is very, very new right now. This is something that I believe a few others have also picked up on, the fact that iOS 11 is not yet fully optimized for all of the apps. And maybe by the time the iPhone 10 comes out, then all of these little things would have been ironed out and we will redo this test. What did you think of the results of this test? Definitely drop me a comment below and let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does 